In this video, we're going to talk about when to use APIs in your bubble app and when to use automation tools like Zapier or Integromat. Now we've created another video that compares bubble to a platform like Zapier, but the reality is you can use both at the same time. And so today we're going to talk about how to decide when you should use APIs in your bubble app in order to connect to outside services, third-party platforms, and when you should use an automation tool like Zapier. This is gonna answer that question for you. Now, make sure you stick around until the end because I also wanna link you up with a free training that's gonna help you get started in the most strategic ways with your no-code app and business. So stick around for that. Now, first, if you're new around here, my name is Kristen, and I'm the co-founder of Coaching No-Code Apps, where we help business owners and industry experts build custom apps to either start their app-based businesses or grow their existing businesses all without coding and with no technical background required. So today, we're diving into how to make the decision on when to actually go into your bubble app and set up an API connection and when to use a simple automation tool like Zapier. So what I'm going to do is share my screen here. And we are going to jump over to the whiteboard so that we can break this down. Now, you can see I have a Venn diagram on my screen here. And we're going to be comparing APIs, using APIs to connect to third-party services within your bubble app and using an, an automation tool like Zapier or Integromat. So what I want to do first is break down the pros and cons of each of these, because you, you can use both. And chances are at some point you will be using both, but you have to know when one is right over the other so that you can make the best decisions for your app right now and also as you scale. So what we're going to do is start with automation tools. Again, automation tools like Zapier, and, and these are kind of like uh, the, the middlemen when you're working with third-party services. So if you're using an API, you are connecting a third-party service, another app, directly to your bubble app. When you're using an automation tool, you're kind of putting a, a middleman or a messenger um, directly between your app and the other service. Now, the reason why you would do this is one of the first benefits that I want to talk about. And that is that these automation tools do a lot of the heavy lifting for you. So we're going to put heavy lifting down here. Now, to be clear, you don't need a technical background in order to be able to work with APIs in your app. You don't have to know how to code, but there is some more upfront work involved on your part in setting up an API yourself with these automation tools, that's part of the purpose. They do the heavy lifting when it comes to the setup. And that's one of the big benefits. And one of the reasons why so many people use them is because when you're setting up uh, these tools to, to work with your app and, and other outside services, they really take you through a simple series of steps to make that setup happen without too much needing to happen on your end. So this is one of the big benefits of using them. And one of the ways we like to look at using tools like Zapier is they're kind of like presets or almost like plugins for these uh, for this communication to happen between your app and another service. Now, they're not technically plugins um, that you would actually add on to your app, but you can think of them in that way, right? When you use this service, it's kind of like a plug and play service. And so a lot of the heavy lifting is done and, and that's because you can kind of treat them like presets, okay? So it just speeds up the process really. So it's just a lot faster. Now, these are the big benefits of using automation tools. This is really it in a nutshell. They do a lot of the, the heavy lifting for you. A lot of the work is done. Uh, you don't have to have a lot of knowledge on how to set these things up. Things can happen a lot faster, okay? So that's really what you're looking at here. But you have to understand 
that along with these benefits, these advantages, come some drawbacks or, or at least some things that you need to be aware of when making this decision. So the, the first thing is that automation tools don't always support the third-party services that you need. Now, if you go onto Zapier's website, you'll see that there are a ton of apps that you can connect to, which is great. And that, that database or that collection will likely continue to grow. But depending on the tool you use and, and regardless, not every service will, will be on there. Okay, so you might not be supported. So your, let's say here, your third party service uh, may not be supported. Okay. So that's something that you have to look out for because if it's not supported, but you need to connect, well, then you're going to have to go the API route. Okay. Now, the other thing to keep in mind is that as with anything that brings you speed and convenience, there comes a cost when you're using automation tools. Okay, so generally, taking advantage of tools like this comes with a price. You have to pay for it, right? Now, sometimes, like with Zapier, you can have a certain number of automations happen for free, but if you're looking at any type of scale, those are going to add up. You're going to have to move on to a paid plan, most likely. And so you just need to be aware that by sacrificing that uh, or, or compromising on the amount of work you want to do or the amount of time you want to spend, you, you just have to pay for that, right? So it's a pretty, a pretty simple trade-off, but it's there and you need to be aware of it. Now, one other thing that you want to keep your or you want to keep in mind at least, is outages, okay? If any messenger or middleman that you're using experiences an outage, then your users or your app is going to experience an outage as well. Now, outages happen, right? It's, it's going to happen inevitably, but the, the less of an impact those have on your app obviously the better because that means less outage time for you. Now, when you're using or when you're connecting with third-party services, those can obviously also experience outages at certain times. But if you're adding in a middleman, then you're adding in another layer on top of that. If you're connecting directly via API, you're cutting out that middleman and therefore you're reducing the chance or the likelihood that an additional outage may happen at some point. So again, something to keep in mind when you're considering this. Now, the other thing that's really important to understand is that when you're using automation tools like this, typically you can connect from your app to another service, but your users won't necessarily be able to connect to another service using your app. Okay, so this is a really important distinction to make. If you're looking to connect to third-party platforms, third-party services, usually these automation tools are going to help with your app's connection, not with the user-facing side of things. So having users come onto your app and then being able to connect to other apps, it doesn't happen in the same way. Okay, so again, important distinction to make. Um, connection, we're going to say connection is different for you versus users, okay. So automation tools, really handy. They do a lot of the heavy lifting. They speed things up, but they come with their own caveats, right? Um, you are using a middleman. You are adding in another platform. You are paying a price for these. And it's not necessarily the end all be all for your app when it comes to your users, okay? Now, looking at APIs, when you're using an API, you are connecting your app directly to an outside service. So it's, it comes again with its own pros and cons. You have to know when to you or when to go this route as well. So as we've already talked about, when you do this, when you use APIs, there's no middleman. 
Okay. And this is something that we generally like. We like to keep things as simplified and streamlined as possible. It helps generally with scalability, with growth, just because of the fact that you have fewer services intertwined and more of what you're needing is happening within your app. So it can often be, um, especially bigger picture and long term, it can often be helpful to bring things in house, bring things into your app. Okay. Now, another thing is with APIs, you have full control over how you want this setup to happen and the communication to happen with your app and with another, uh, with another platform or third party service. When you're using an automation tool like Zapier, you're limited to the types of actions that that middleman tool offers. Okay, when you're using an API, on the other hand, you don't have those same limitations. You're in charge of the setup. You can dictate what you want to happen between your app and that, and that other app or that third-party service, okay? So it does free up your own capabilities, gives you full control, reduces those limitations that you might otherwise experience from using something like Zapier, okay? Now, Another thing to keep in mind when you're using Bubble specifically and you're, you're working with APIs in your app, Bubble does have a lot of presets, kind of like we talked about with the automation tools. Okay, so Bubble will help you in, in a lot of cases with some of the initial setup. So they'll do some of the heavy lifting for you when you're using APIs. Okay, so it's pretty clear if, if you look at this that, you know, with APIs, you're doing more upfront work, right? But you get more control, fewer limitations, more flexibility. With automation tools, a lot of the work is being done for you, but you're a little bit more limited. Okay, now with APIs, you do wanna keep in mind that there's going to be a higher learning curve. Now, like I said, you, you don't need a technical background in order to be able to work with APIs. You can do this successfully. And our, our clients are doing this all the time, working with APIs without technical background, but there's gonna be a higher learning curve. Okay, now this is, we've talked about this in, in other videos before. This is the case with any tool or platform that gives you more control. Anytime you have more control, it means you need to be able to understand how to leverage that tool, or that platform correctly to, to be able to benefit from that control. It's the same with using APIs. There is still a learning curve in order for you to actually take advantage of all the control and all the capabilities that APIs will provide for you, okay? And with that being said, there is some extra upfront work, all right? You have to actually set these up in your app, okay? So in terms of you know, finding the, the API that you need to use, making sure that you can pull the right data into your app, uh, making sure that you have access to that API, and then going in and actually setting it up in your app so that all the right things are happening. It, it takes some more upfront work. So you're, you're looking at it as a bigger upfront investment in learning and implementation to achieve that control and flexibility on the other side. Okay, so hopefully this gives you a good breakdown of when you might use one over the other in your own situations. You know, do you need more control than what an automation tool might allow? Do you need to connect with this third party service in a way that an automation tool might not allow? Thinking of your own needs, also your users' needs. Okay, are you happy to put in the extra learning up front to be able to leverage APIs with your app? These are things that you'll want to decide on because the, the answer is different for, for everyone. Okay, but hopefully this helps you decide. Now, with that being said, you can use both. Okay, you can use both and you likely will use both, which is why we have this on a Venn diagram because that leaves us this space in the middle where you're really you're really taking advantage of the best of both worlds, really. So 
if you use APIs for user facing functions, okay, where you need more control, all right, that's going to allow you to create a more robust, fully functional app. And you can use things like, like Zaps in the case of, of Zapier, Zaps for internal actions or triggers, okay? So setting up APIs, giving you more, more control over communicating or having your app communicate with outside services, but maybe using things like Zapier or Integromat to help with some of your internal facing processes. Okay, so, um, you know, connecting to a scheduling service via API, right, directly from your app um, and having your users interact with that scheduling service, that could be an example of using an API. And using an automation tool, maybe having a Zap sent to uh, a spreadsheet for, for your internal record keepings every time someone submits a, a, an answer to a certain question that you're asking them when they're going through a booking process, right? Hopefully that, that kind of gives you a, a good understanding of how that might work, right? So APIs for that fuller functionality, something like Zapier for an internal process that's kind of like uh, just a, a something repeatable, um, something that is just sending off a quick piece of information, something like that. That's how we use it. And that's how we advise using these in conjunction. And hopefully that can help you as well. All right. So whether to use APIs or whether to use tools like Zapier or Integromat, uh, automation tools in general. At the end of the day, it's up to you, but think about your immediate needs. Where do these fit in for you? And think about your longer term needs. Are these really going to serve the, the purpose you intend for them to serve once you start bringing users on board, once you start growing your app? You don't need to think years down the road, but just make some practical decisions, right? Which is really going to help you? Is saving time by using automation tools going to give you the, the full flexibility and control you really need? Uh, think about it that way, right? So generally, APIs, fuller, more robust functionality, more control, automation tools, quick processes, uh, things that that maybe aren't so integral to your app, but that can still help speed processes up, help things run on the back end a little bit more smoothly. So you don't have to think about doing a lot of these processes manually or spend the time building it out when you just don't really have to, all right? So I hope that helps you. Now, I mentioned that we do have a training where if you are, if you're just starting out with your app or if you haven't started yet, but you're planning on, on building a no-code app so that you can launch or scale your business, we have a free 75-minute workshop that takes you through a lot of strategy on, on both the, the planning and then the business side of things, as well as on the tech side of things with some of the no-code tools, right? So it's going to take you through a step-by-step -step process that we like to follow to make sure you're building the right things at the right time, leveraging your no-code tools in the right way so that you can move your app forward effectively. Now, if you want to join in on that, you can head to coachingnocodeapps.com forward slash workshop. We hope to see you there and thanks so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one.